Organson, and welcome to Quilting from the Heartland. Welcome to Quilting from the Heartland. I'm Charlene Jorgensen, and today I'm going to show you how to build log cabin in the woods. This quilt is very similar to the one we did in the last series, but I want to point out some differences between the two. First of all, in the quilt we're making today, you'll see two main blocks. First of all, the block with the houses in it, and then there's a courthouse step block. Also, the log cabins are surrounded with both light and dark fabrics. It is the center one, of course, that has the dark all the way around it. And it is the path that runs through the courthouse step that actually makes a lot of the interest in this quilt. Now let's take a look at the quilt that we did in the past series, and so you can see what a dramatic change can be made when you eliminate that courthouse step block. The alternate blocks in this one are all plain, and there's just a continuous line tree to decorate the center of each of them. Also, another big change in the two quilts is the way that the frame was put on the outside edge. This one is utilizing scraps that were left, were left over from the houses. Now taking a look again at the one we're going to work at today, and when you look at the border on this one, you'll see that the border has the courthouse step block in half. We just used one half of each of the blocks. And then in the far corners, there's another block which would also be put together like the one we made in the first uh, program, which was started in the corner. So you see there really aren't that many things that you have to learn to do. There's just basic, really basically two main blocks that you have to learn to make. Also, I want to point out the quilting on the houses before we get started to work today. And look at the front of the house. You'll see how we have quilted the gable end uh, going in as one piece and then around the door and also the roof has been quilted as a separate piece. And then all of the other logs in the house are just quilted one-fourth of an inch from the edge. Also, the border on this quilt has cross-hatching all the way through the border. Now before we start cutting, I want you to look at another quilt that we did in the 500 series, which we called Southwest Log Cabin. Now that quilt also has the courthouse step, but it is combined with the traditional log cabin block. We named it Southwest Log Cabin specifically because of the way that we arranged the blocks in the design. And then, of course, it was quilted also to complement the Southwest theme. Well, now we're going to get started uh, doing some of the cutting, but before that, I want to show you the blocks a little bit closer up. And here we have a dark house to my right, and then we have in the middle one that has the light fabric around it, and then, of course, the uh, courthouse step block that I was talking to you about. And then the courthouse step in half. In the border, there are two plans for that block. You need to have one with the light in this part and one with the dark. And then the corner block is just simply this block right here. So you see, it's not going to be that hard to build this quilt. When starting to cut, well actually before you cut, you need to wash all your fabric. And I wash it in a fabric uh, with a soap that doesn't have any bleaching additives in it. Now we're going to use the pattern shapes that you see here. Actually there are logs for all the different things that you need to do in the house, except we'll do some different uh, techniques when we cut the roof. Otherwise, you'll have everything that you need in this set. 
Now I'm going to cut the fabric for the logs actually a little bit different than you would expect. And I have folded the fabric in half, matching the selvage edges, and then I have again folded the fabric in half one more time and matched the fold to the selvage edge. And with a square 12 by 12 ruler, actually it's a 12 and a half by 12 and a half, and then I'll straighten this edge over here. And then I'm supposed to allow myself plenty of room to turn. And we'll lay the template up here that we need. Now this one, nope, we need a longer one. Now if you were cutting for the courthouse step, you would remember which, or, or check to see which piece you need, and then just slide it over, and this one, We'll cut right here. Get it lined up first. Okay. Then after you've done that, just remove that fabric and you're ready to start cutting the logs. Now you'll turn it this way first to cut this end off. Now the reason I do it this way is so that you don't waste fabric. I found that when I cut the logs going from selvage to selvage, I always ended up with that little bit of waste at the end of each strip. And this way you don't waste any of the fabric. Then just simply lay it up on top and continue cutting until you have cut all the logs that you need for that house. And that's how how you would cut all of the pieces for the courthouse step and the main part of the house and the skyline. But we have to cut for the gable end of the house and the sky and the roof with a def different method. And ahead of time I have cut a strip for the gable end and it is cut three and one eighth inches wide. And I also want to point out that I took advantage of the direction of the print and I put the design going horizontally in the gable end and then on the front of the house I put it going up and down just to add a little interest. Also notice that I used two different reds for the house to add also another dimension. Now I mentioned I cut the strip three and, or three and an eighth inches wide and then to cut the other part, or the other angle, I'm just going to take the ruler and I'll find the 45 degree angle on the ruler and I'll match up the 45 degree angle line with this edge of the ruler right here. See the line right there? And then this will be the gable end. Now you could just flip flop your way across that strip of fabric. See here's the other one over here. So you wouldn't have any waste. So that would be the part that would go there. And I'll actually start putting it up on the flannel board here so you can see easier what I'm doing. Now the next one that I will cut will be the roof part right here. And for that we're using a print that really added to the house, I thought. It actually looks like shingles. And these strips are cut three inches wide. Now, something interesting about the roof, you need to make sure that all of the roofs are going at the same angle. So if I left this fabric folded in half, I would end up with a mirror image of each other, which would be wrong. So these you can cut only one at a time. Now to start out, I first have to cut the fabric at a 45. Nope, that's 30. We need 45. And then I'll turn the strip around.
See, now they'll both be going in the same direction. Then I need to move that ruler over so that it's on the 5 and 1 8 inch mark. And I need to move it up here, though, so that you can see the 45 degree angle line there. And then we'll move it, well, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, and one eighth. Just like that. Now let's double check and see if that's right. Nope, it's wrong. It's four and one eighth. We'll get it right. That was good that I double checked that. Okay. Four and one eighth. Okay, that's how easy it is to cut the roof. So you started out with a three inch strip, cut it on the 45 on both ends of the roof. The last piece that you need to cut is the sky end on both ends of the roof, or the sky triangle, I guess would be another way to put it. And for that one, I'm going to use a different ruler and it is made specifically for half square triangles. And this strip has been cut three inches wide, but notice that there is a little ear up here with a little mark. It has the quarter inch built into this ruler, which makes it so nice for making half square triangles. Now I'm gonna cut like that, and then to cut the other end, you would just simply line the ruler up here with a two and a half inch line, and have the line on the top lined up with the edge of the fabric, and then you would cut one more of those. And that's how simple it is to cut all of the pieces for the house. Well, I think it's time to start get, uh, building the house, so let's go to the sewing machine and get started. We'll be sewing the seams with a cotton thread, and that will match the fabric, of course, for uh, strength as well as care. Now, when you build the house, you have to decide where you're going to start, and we're going to start up in this area right here. You need to add the gable end to the sky over here. So let's take these two pieces off. And then we'll have to add the roof next. Okay, notice how I put those two pieces right side together. And also I want to point out that, see that little ear, ear down there that we cut off when we were doing that half square triangle? That's fine, we just matched up the edges. And then when I sew to the other end, we'll sew off in the crevice there. Now when you're sewing uh, on a bias edge like this, make sure you don't stretch the fabric, but just let it go through by itself and just kind of guide it with the stiletto as you're sewing along. Now when you're using the stiletto, you can actually poke through both of the fabrics if you want to, and that will uh, hold them better. Now the next piece that we'll add will be the roof after we get this one pressed. Now let's take a look at the back side of this so you can see how it's been pressed. The seam has been pressed open in here. Take time to press this seam open before you add the gable end or the gable roof to the house. Okay, now put the right sides together and when you put them in place, you'll have a little ear on each end. You'll see that there's an ear down here, and this one up here will start out on top. And that is where you'll sew off. Actually, right in the crevice will be where the seam will end. Now I'm gonna sew with this on top so that I can keep track of this fabric up here. Okay, 
And again, make sure you don't stretch that fabric when you're sewing because you don't want to get the um, roof crooked. And then just kind of poke through both those fabrics and you'll have very good control of the fabric. And then hold this down with the stiletto when you come to that corner and right into the crevice will be where the seam will end. Now I'm going to point out an intersection that you need to be aware of. And when this seam is pressed open, it's going to be more visible and easier to see. Again, you'll take just a minute or less to finger press that open. See how nice that lays down? This is the one that I'm talking about right here. See where this intersection comes together? That is one fourth of an inch from the end or from the edge. Now we'll go back to this one and we have pressed that seam open and on the opposite end we've added the sky to the other end of the roof. And that will complete the skyline and the roof part of the house. Now up on top of the roof you'll see that we have the chimney in the center and then a log on top on both sides of that. So now this section will be put together. Again we'll put them right sides together and it doesn't really matter I guess which end you put the roof, let's see, or the chimney, it goes towards the you can either have it towards the front of the house or towards the back end of the house, see, depending on which way you flip this, because this log is a little bit longer over here. Now this time I want to sew with the roof section on top because I'll be able to see this intersection right here. I want to sew directly over that point. Now I'm just going to finger pin these pieces together and I'll be able to start sewing. Now if you want to use pins, that's totally fine. Um, I do recommend, however, that you use a silk pin instead of those larger ones that are so often available. Okay, now hold the fabric down in front of there. And when you come closer to the chimney, check underneath and make sure that everything is laying flat. And then just continue on. This was a fun quilt to design. It was fun picking the fabric, of course. There are so many to pick from now. And it was fun looking for the fabrics that would make the house look more realistic. For instance, the roof fabric. I was really excited when I found that particular one. Okay, here's the intersection that you need to sew exactly over that point. completed the top part of the house. And of course you would take the time to finger press that seam open and uh, continue on to the main part of the house. Now let's look at the main part down here. I'll put this up here so that it looks better. Okay, now let's take the front section of the house and break that apart a little bit. Here we have two logs going in this direction over the door and then where the door actually sits, we've got them going up and down. So you'd simply sew those together, um, right sides, and then press them open, and then that will be the next section that will go together. Check underneath. We'll quickly press that open and then we'll be ready to finish the front of the house. Okay. 
Now there's going to be a log going on both sides of the door. On one side, we'll have just one over here, and then over here we've already connected two of them together. So we'll put this one on first on one side, and then the other one will go on the other side. You could make each one of your houses different if you wanted to. Um, actually taking advantage of all the scraps that you have. This time I thought it was going to be fun to experiment with all the same fabric in the houses and I only changed them with the fabric that was around uh, the house. Okay. So you see it's pretty easy to build this log cabin. Now then this one would come over here and that would finish then the front part of the house. Now the side of the house or with the window section and I'll bring that over here so it's easier for you to see is just simply a, a window set between two smaller squares and then here we have two logs running up and down. Up on top here you'll see these two sections now have been connected to each other and all that's left to do is to connect the roof to the main part of the house and then finish that block off with a log on the side. And this is what the completed block will look like when it's done. Now there are two houses in the uh, quilt. There is one of course with the light background on it and then there was one with a dark background and I'll show you how the whole quilt is going to go together. On the corner of the quilt we had the light one so that is going to be on the bottom and then in the center we had the dark house and this is the one I was referring to as being different and then we have See now how, what happens when you turn the courthouse step, what, how it changes the design. You can do a lot of different things just by turning the block 90 degrees. Okay, now this one will come up into here. Now when I started this quilt, I had selected a different fabric to go around this house and I want to show you how it changed the whole appearance of the quilt. I thought it got way too busy in here and it really softened it up when I used the same fabric around the house here as I did in the last log on the courthouse step. Now if I were to cut this quilt again, the one change that I would probably make would be I would use the same fabric for the dark part of the courthouse step as I used around here, just like I did around the light part of the lighter houses and in the light courthouse step block. So really you wouldn't have to go in search of quite so many fabrics. I want to spend the end of the program talking about how to put a courthouse step block together. So we'll move this out of the way and we already have in place on a flannel board all of these steps. And we will together go through the construction of the block. It's a very simple one and everybody is familiar with it. And you start out in the center of the block with a nine patch and it's just simply nine squares sewn together and it's where you put the color that makes the design happen. Then after the nine patch is done, you put the two light on one end and then you continue on to the next step and here we have the light already connected. Now to get that design to keep going we need to put a green on each or a red on the end of the green and then we'll have a pattern start to form. And see here you can already see the courthouse step coming together and then just repeating that same process add another log on each end over here. 
until you have the completed block. Now all of the seams again were pressed open on the courthouse step. And if you choose to press them to one side, that's totally fine. It's just how I prefer to do it. And then, of course, you can change the total arrangement of this quilt just by simply moving the blocks around like I showed you earlier. Now let's take a look again at the border blocks which we had at the front table and study those a little closer. There are three blocks then that make up the border in this quilt and it starts in the outside corner with a block that's mostly light. In fact, this one was built from the corner like the one I showed you last week. And then the next two blocks are simply half of the courthouse step block. The difference between the next two is just simply where the color is placed in that block. And this would then be a closer look at those blocks. This being the corner one, then the next two would come into place like this. And that's how I built the border then for the outside edge. And then of course around the edge of that then we just simply put a wide uh, border which was the same width as the, or the same color, excuse me, as the red that was used in the little squares. Then after the whole top was put together, it was time to quilt it and we used a low loft batting for the uh, quilt sandwich. And I prefer to use that especially for wall quilts because it is such a lightweight. And also it's much easier for me to hand quilt it. Well, I've had an awful lot of fun sharing all of my ideas with you today when we were building the log cabin quilt. And next week, we're going to open Pandora's box when we build the wedding ring.